This presentation provides a brief summary of Florida's stone crab fishery and outlines a series of proposed management changes to help improve the fishery. Staff is heard concerns about the long-term health of the stone crab fishery, and there are indications that the fishery is likely undergoing overfishing. Staff has worked with the stone crab industry for several years and has developed a series of draft management changes that were presented at the May 2020 commission meeting. Although commissioners approved the draft proposal, they directed staff to continue gathering feedback and continue evaluating options before returning for a final public hearing in July. We are seeking public input on potential management changes to be included as a final proposal that will be presented to the commission at the July commission meeting. Stone crab is one of the most valuable commercial fisheries in Florida, and it also supports a popular recreational fishery. Stone crabs are primarily harvested with traps, but can also be harvested by diving. This fishery occurs statewide, but is most common from the Big Bend down through the Keys in Miami-Dade County. There is no federal management plan for stone crab, and FWC manages this fishery in both state and federal waters off Florida. Commercial stone crab landings show a long-term decline in average annual stone crab harvest over the last 20 years, and multiple FWC stock assessments indicate that the fishery has been overexploited and has likely been undergoing overfishing since the late 1990s. In that time, the fishery has experienced a 22% decline in annual landings, which represents an estimated loss of about $8.3 million in potential annual dockside revenue at current market prices. However, because market prices have increased over time, this fishery is still profitable for harvesters. Management changes are necessary to prevent further decline of this valuable resource and the fishery it supports. This graph shows total commercial stone crab landings, the blue solid line, and the total fishery value, the green dotted line, for each stone crab season since the mid-1980s. You can see that landings are cyclical with regular highs and lows. However, the landings show an overall long-term decline in annual harvest since around 2000. This also shows that the overall value of the fishery has continued to increase despite declines in landings. Let's talk briefly about the management approach that staff discussed with commissioners at the May Commission meeting and how we've arrived at the current recommendations. For this fishery, staff plans to focus on increasing the stone crab population and building resiliency in the fishery. We're proposing to achieve this by reducing harvest, increasing the spawning stock, decreasing the fishery's interaction with egg-bearing females, reducing mortality of undersized crabs, and reducing release mortality. We also believe that a combination of management changes will give the largest positive benefit to the fishery. Staff has worked closely with the commercial stone crab industry for many years to address declines in landings, and earlier this year, industry members recommended a suite of potential management changes. These recommendations were considered when developing staff's initial proposal for public comment. On the next few slides, I'll go over the draft management changes that were presented at the May Commission meeting, things to take into consideration for each management option, and how staff is proposing to move forward on each option. The May draft rule proposal included modifying the stone crab season by moving the end date from May 15th to April 9th. This change is expected to reduce annual harvest by at least 10%, reduce the fisheries interaction with egg-bearing females at the end of the season, and reduce mortality associated with warmer water temperatures. The current season has been in place since 1971 and was intended to avoid interaction with egg-bearing crabs. However, stone crabs have been spawning earlier and earlier, and more egg-bearing crabs are being found in traps towards the end of the season now. Stone crab harvest is highest at the beginning of the season, so shifting the season earlier to compensate for moving the end of the season back could actually increase harvest and subject crabs to higher release mortality because of warmer water temperatures. We have also heard some concerns about potential conflicts with the end of lobster season and the difficulty associated with remo removing both lobster traps and stone crab traps at the same time. Lobster season ends on March 31st and traps must be removed from the water by April 10th. Considering public feedback, staff is seeking public comment on an updated proposal to end the season on April 9th but to also extend the postseason trap removal period for stone crab from five days to 10 days. Extending the trap removal period allows traps to be fished later into the season and will reduce conflicts with the end of lobster season. 
To reduce mortality of undersized crabs caught in traps and bycatch of other species, the draft proposal presented at the May Commission meeting also included requiring an escape ring in all plastic and wood stone crab traps by the 2023-2024 season. This proposal was informed by a two-year study conducted by scientists with FWC's Fish and Wildlife Research Institute in collaboration with commercial harvesters. This proposal has re received broad support from commercial industry. The study found that installing a 2 and 3 16 inch diameter escape ring allows stone crabs without leucal claws and other bycatch to escape the trap without significantly reducing the catch of crabs with legal size claws. Commercial harvesters report that these escape rings improve the efficiency of working their traps and many harvesters are already using them voluntarily. Escape rings are already required in wire stone crab traps. Escape rings can be installed in existing plastic and wood traps, and if approved by the commission, staff will develop educational materials on how to install escape rings in both plastic and wood traps. We are seeking public input on requiring a 2 and 3 16 inch escape ring in all plastic and wood stone crab traps by the 2023-2024 season. The next portion of the proposal pre presented at the May Commission meeting was increasing the minimum claw size limit by one eighth of an inch from two and three quarters inches to two and seven eighths inches. This change is intended to increase spawning potential and may protect a portion of mature crabs from harvest for an additional season. The current minimum size limit was established in 1973 and was intended to allow females to spawn for at least two seasons before they enter the fishery. Increasing the minimum claw size limit by an eighth of an inch is expected to have short-term reduction in the harvest of medium-sized claws. Staff initially proposed increasing the minimum size limit by a quarter of an inch, but received significant opposition from the commercial industry. Industry participants instead suggested increasing the size limit by an eighth of an inch as a compromise. Based on public feedback, staff is seeking public comment on moving forward with an eighth of an inch size limit increase make to make the minimum claw size two and seven eighths inches. This increase in claw size is expected to reduce harvest of smaller but still mature crabs and increase spawning potential ratio when implemented in combination with the other proposed changes. The final aspect of the May 2020 draft rule proposal was to limit the amount of whole stone crabs that can be possessed on the water to two, two checker boxes. This change is intended to reduce unnecessary mortality of released crabs. While working a line of traps, crabs with claws close to the size limit are often temporarily held in checker boxes on deck until claws can be measured for compliance with the size limit. Currently, there's no limit on the amount of whole stone crabs you can have aboard a vessel. And while most harvesters measure and harvest legal claws at the end of each line of traps, some harvesters hold crabs on board for much longer. Some also report that they don't use checker boxes at all. Because recreational harvesters are limited to five traps per person and two gallons of claws per vessel, this change is not expected to impact the recreational fishery. We are seeking, we are seeking comment on limiting the possession of whole stone crabs on the water to note more than two checker boxes, each up to three feet by two feet by two feet or 12 cubic feet in volume. This is expected to reduce the amount of time crabs are out of the water, thereby reducing mortality while still allowing a harvester to pull a line of traps and set aside a portion of the crabs that may be close to the size limit to be measured um, at their earliest convenience. The proposed checker box size was informed by current practices in the commercial fishery. There are many things to consider related to potential management changes for this fishery. As mentioned earlier, commercial landings show a long-term declining trend and based on previous stock assessments, this fishery is likely undergoing overfishing under current regulations. Based on the available information, including landings and stone crab biology, changes are needed to improve the stone crab stock and the fishery. Some regulations like the stone crab season and minimum claw size have been in place since the 1970s. The stone crab industry has recognized that changes are needed and this proposal was developed in coordination with industry members. Staff believes that implementing this combination of proposed rule changes is a necessary step toward improving the fishery now. These changes could have an effect on the economics of the fishery, but we're proposing these changes as a long-term investment in improving the fishery's future. A new stock assessment is expected within three years, and additional management changes could be considered in the future if necessary. 
If approved by the commission at the July commission meeting, changes could be in place before the upcoming 2020-2021 stone crab season. This slide shows a summary of potential final management changes. These changes are intended to improve the stone crab population and build, build resiliency in the fishery and would apply to both commercial and recreational harvesters. We are asking for public feedback on the following changes. Moving the end of stone crab season from May 15th to April 9th, extending the postseason stone crab trap removal period from five days to 10 days, requiring a two and three sixteenths inch escape ring in all plastic and wood stone crab traps by the 2023-2024 season, increasing the minimum claw size by an eighth of an inch to two and seven eighths inches, limiting the possession of whole stone crabs on the water to two checker boxes, each up to three feet by two feet by two feet, or 12 cubic feet in volume. Please note that the proposed management changes listed on this slide are subject to change based on public input. To ensure that you are providing comments on the current proposal, please visit myfwc.com slash saltwater comments. There are a few different ways to provide public comment on the stone crab fishery and the potential final management changes. You may submit your feedback online via the FWC's saltwater comments webpage at myfwc.com slash saltwater comments or by sending an email to marine at myfwc.com. Both links are available on the screen. If you would like to organize a virtual small group meeting with FWC staff to discuss this proposal, please contact us at the email address listed on the slide. You may also provide comments directly to the commissioners at the next commission meeting. Staff will present a summary of the feedback we received and a proposal for final rule changes at the July 22nd through 23rd commission meeting. We anticipate that this will be a virtual meeting similar to how the May Commission meeting was conducted. Details will be posted online once they've been finalized. Thank you for viewing this virtual Stone Crab Public Workshop. Please reach out to FWC staff or go online to submit your public comments.